So today, boys and girls in math, we are on the last lesson of our chapter three math book. It's lesson 3.9. Today, we're gonna solve problems using the strategy called draw a picture. And on slide three of our Google Slides presentation, you have our YouTube video channel. So if you need to refer back to any of the math videos or foundations videos, they will be there. And let's watch today's lesson of how we're gonna draw a picture to solve problems. How can you solve problems by using the strategy, draw a picture? Good morning. Rafferty and Henry are eating breakfast. Click Rafferty to see what they like to eat. They both love clovers. Henry eats seven clovers. Rafferty eats a number of clovers two greater than seven. Hmm, how can I find the number of clovers that Rafferty eats? Maybe I could draw a picture. Let's learn more about how to do that. Ben is drawing kites. He drew seven red kites. He wants to draw a number of blue kites, one greater than the red kites. How many blue kites will Ben draw? What do you know about the red kites Ben drew? You know he drew seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ben drew seven red kites. What do you know about the blue kites? Ben wants to draw a number of blue kites that is one greater than the red kites. When something is greater, you count more to find the answer. You can show seven matching blue kites and one more to get your answer. Now let's show the blue kites. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have a matching number of red kites and blue kites. Now let's show one more blue kite. Now you have seven and one more. What is one greater than seven? Eight. Ben will draw eight blue kites. All right, so this is what we're working on today, boys and girls. We are learning how to solve a problem using the strategy, strategy called draw a picture. So we more or less have an idea of what drawing a picture is because we do it all the time. So the first problem you will find on page 167. That's towards the very back of the book since this is the last lesson of our chapter three math book. Now at the bottom it says, the directions, there are seven flags on the red tent. Trace the flags. The blue tent has a number of flags, one greater than the red tent. How many flags are on the blue tent? Draw the flags. So first, let's take apart this problem because when we have a problem that we need to solve, we have to take apart the pieces of the problem to break it down and understand what we need to do to solve the problem. So the first sentence says, there are seven flags on the red tent. Trace the flags. So let's do that. We're gonna trace the flags that are up on the red tent. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you know what? Since we have seven red flags, why don't we label the number seven on the red tent so we know that we have seven red flags? Okay. So after you trace the seven flags, 
I would like for you to write the number seven on the red tent to show that we have seven flags. I'll give you guys another moment and then we're gonna move on to the bottom tent, which is the blue tent. And then I'll explain to you what the instructions say there. So the next sentence of the problem says, the blue tent has a number of flags that's one greater than the red tent. So this goes back to remembering the vocabulary words that we learned in chapter two. Greater means more, less than means that it's a smaller number. So they want us to draw flags on the blue tent and it has to be one greater than what the red tent has. So if the red tent has seven, what's one greater than seven? All you have to do is count one number more than seven. So who can help out Ms. Castro? What's the next number after seven? Scarlett? Zero. That was a good try. So wait, Scarlett, hold on. We have zero flags on the blue tent. You are right. But listen to this. They want us to draw flags on the blue tent. So if the red tent has seven, I need one more than seven. That's how many flags we're gonna draw on the blue tent. So if seven is on red, what's one greater than seven? What's the next number after seven? Eight. Correct, very good, Scarlett. So that's why boys and girls, we sometimes we have to keep repeating the question and going over it so we know what we have to do. So Scarlett said that one greater than seven is eight, which is correct. So on the blue tent, we're gonna illustrate eight flags. So let's begin. One. I need the two, eight on the, the book. Three. We're drawing eight flags on the blue tent, Dylan. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. So since we have eight flags on the blue tent, we're gonna go ahead and label that blue tent with the number eight. So I just labeled it myself and I'm gonna share it with you so you can see what it looks like. Now my flags are not the best illustration, but I know you boys and girls can do better than Ms. Castro. So you're illustrating eight flags on top of the blue tent since one greater than seven is eight. So it's very important, boys and girls, to remember that math vocabulary that we learned in chapter two. Remember, greater means more, a number that's bigger. Less means a number that's smaller, okay? All right, in a few moments, we're gonna turn to the next page and we're gonna work on the next problem. All right, so next page is page 168. Now, I want you boys and girls to focus on the top rectangle box that is the color blue and it has a green horse. Now, we're gonna do our work in that box. So what Ms. Castro is gonna do is I have to read the problem first, and then I have to break the problem down by pieces so we understand what we have to do. So here's what it says. Bianca has five hats. Lay buys a number of hats, two greater than five. Draw the hats, write the numbers. So that's the whole problem. To really understand the problem, we need to do the work by breaking apart this problem, okay? So first sentence says, Bianca has five hats. So this is what we're gonna do. On the top, try not to take up all the space because we have to show the work for Lay and for Bianca. So for Bianca, we're gonna show the work on the top. She has five hats. So let's draw five circles to show those five hats. One. Two, three, four, and five. 
A little sloppy Miss Casha did. So you boys and girls do a better job than I did. So for the five circles that we drew for Bianca, we need to write the number five on the top line. This is why Ms. Castro was saying that you have to focus on doing your work for each problem in the correct area. So that way it's not too big where you're taking up too much space away from the work where you need to show for the next part. So what you see on the screen is exactly how I would like for you boys and girls to focus on doing the work, okay? Not too big, not too small either, of course. Just the right size. Okay, so now the next part says, Lay buys a number of hats that's two greater than five. So the key word here, listen to the key words, greater than five. So it's two greater than five. So we have to think of the number five and then we jump two numbers more than five. So if we say five, Put up your hand, you're gonna do jump two num more numbers after five. So it's five, six, seven. So two greater than five is seven. So we have to show seven. So on the bottom of that same blue rectangle box, we're gonna illustrate seven circles. One, two, Three, four, whoops, it disappeared. Four, there we go. Five, six, and seven. Because two greater than five is seven. So on the line, we're gonna illustrate the number seven. Okay. So that's our work that we're showing. We're drawing a picture, which is a strategy that we're learning in math today. We're illustrating the picture, we're labeling our circles and we're writing the numbers on the lines, okay? So that's for number one. Next, we're gonna go down to the red rectangle with the brown horse. And now we're gonna listen to that problem. And then we'll take apart the information so that way we can get to the answer. It says, Donna wins nine tokens. A token is like a little coin. Jackie wins a number of tokens, two less than nine. Draw the tokens write the numbers. So let's break apart the information. It says in the first sentence, Donna wins nine tokens. So we're going to illustrate the nine tokens as circles for Donna in the top part of the red rectangle. So here we go. One, I'm going to do it small because nine is a big number. So just be careful not to do it too big in your books, boys and girls. Next number is two, three, four, whoops, that was supposed to be five, but it came out sloppy. Let me fix four. Four came out sloppy too, so I'm going back to four, okay, five. For six, I'm going to draw it under the number one, like if it were a 10 frame. So six, seven is going to go under two, just like if it were in the 10 frame. Seven, eight is going to go under three. And nine is going to go under four. So I like to draw my circles like if a 10 frame were there. So that way I remember exactly where the numbers belong. So on the line, I'm going to write the number nine. Since nine is the number of tokens that we illustrated for 
Donna. Okay. So now let's see who's going to help me out. The next part says, Jackie wins a number of tokens that's two less than nine. So if you put up nine fingers, now you have to count back two away from nine. So when you do two less than nine, you're going to put down two fingers. So you put down one, two. How many tokens does Jackie have? Hold on, I have to let somebody in. Okay, so how many do I have left? Dylan? Three. Say that again? Three. No, that's incorrect, honey. Look correctly at the screen. If you're looking at Ms. Kasha's video, I'm actually putting up my fingers. So I started off with nine, but then I made two less than nine. So I had to take away two fingers. So that's one less, two less. So now how many tokens am I left with? Aaliyah? Go, yeah. go. Say it. Say it, you know it. Seven. Good, mama. Excellent job. Yes, seven. So I'm left with seven fingers, which are the seven tokens that are going to be for Jackie. Jackie won a number of tokens that's two less than nine. So two less than nine is seven. So we're going to illustrate seven circles. Here we go. Miss Castro, I can't see the screen. Uh, hold on a second. I haven't touched the screen at all. I don't know what's happening, but let me redo it again. There we okay. go. Now, do you see it, Alina? Yes, thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, we're drawing seven for Jackie. So we started with one. Next is two. Next to two, three. Next to three, four. I'm sorry, boys and girls, that it's coming out sloppy on my end. But again, I trust that you guys do a much better job than Ms. Castro. Next to four is five. Then we have six. And last but not least, seven. So on the line, we're going to write the number seven for the number of tokens that Jackie has, because they said Jackie has a number of tokens two less than Bianca. All right, we're gonna move on to the next page. I think we might only have time to do the next problem for number three. Looking at the time, I want to give you boys and girls um, that time for you to get into your gym class. So number three, ready? Number three, the problem says, Gary has eight tickets. Four of the tickets are red. The rest are blue. How many are blue? Draw the tickets. Write the number beside each set of tickets. So let's break apart this information. Gary has eight tickets. So let's draw the eight tickets for Gary. One, two, three, and it disappeared. Try again, three, there we go four, five, six, I'm gonna put under the number one, seven is gonna go under the number two, eight is gonna go under three, and I just realized my number three came out super duper sloppy. So let's do that again, there we go. So boys and girls, on the line, <clears throat> Let's focus on the question that they're telling us. So it says that Gary has eight tickets. So we drew the eight tickets. We're gonna write on the line the number eight for those eight tickets that we just drew. So everyone illustrate the number eight on the line for those eight tickets. Now the next part says four of the tickets are red. So now our job is to color four tickets red. So, 
what you're going to do is if you have your crayons or color pencils available, I would like for you to get your red crayon because we have to color the first four tickets red. So let's see if I do it like this. That's one. That's one red. This is two red. This is three red. And this is four red. So those are the four tickets that are red because they said that four of the tickets are red. Now the rest they said are the color blue. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna color the rest blue. So let me change this to blue. So that's one blue, two blue, three blue, and four blue. So as many times as you have to repeat the question, what they're asking you, read it as many times as you have to, because this can get a little confusing. Even for adults, we have to read it many, many times. It said, Gary has eight tickets. We drew the eight tickets and we wrote the number eight on the top line. Four of the tickets are red. So we colored the first four tickets red. The rest of the tickets are blue. So the rest we color blue. How many are blue? So our job is to count the blue tickets. So uh, let's see, who haven't I heard from? Um, Nashla, we haven't heard from you. Can you count for us how many blue we have, honey? Sit up straight, sit up the right way, and that way you can count the blue tickets, okay? Go ahead, nice and loud, Nashla. One, keep going. One, two, three, four. Good, so how many blue tickets do we have, Nashla? Four. Four, good. So boys and girls, on the line, we're gonna write the number four because Nashla counted four blue tickets. So Nashla, in your math book, you're gonna write the number four for the four blue tickets that you just counted, okay? You have your math book there? You're doing your work, Nashla? Mm -mm. Okay, you should get your, your book, honey, so that way you could do your math work. It's good that you're watching, but you also need to do your work. Go get your math book, honey, so you could do the work with us, please. Okay, my mom is gonna get it. Okay, good, and make sure you have a pencil, too. Sit up mm -hmm. nicely, so that way you could do the work once mommy <laughs> brings you the book. There you go, much better. Okay, so boys and girls, I'm gonna stop here only because looking at the time, I have a few things to talk to you about. That way um, you also have enough time to get into your gym class. So what you have tonight for your math assignment on Google Classroom, it's pages 171 and 172. So you're gonna need an adult to help you. And like I said, just like how Ms. Castro had to keep reading the problem many times, the adult might need to re read it a couple of times as well um, because it can get a little bit confusing with the words that they're using. So just read the problem as many times as you need to to understand what you have to do for the work, okay? So those are the two pages. It's page 171 and 172 for tonight's assignments, okay?